thanks everyone for joining us. I hope you all had a great 4th of July weekend and uh, getting back into the groove of things. Uh, today's present webinar is about mobile and web GIS and using mobile and web GIS to communicate with the public. My name is Mike Colodi. I'm a C senior project manager in the GIS division of our geospatial group. And I've got Megan Turi on the webinar as well. She's a GIS specialist and project manager in our GIS group as well. Um, we're going to go through and kind of tag team giving this presentation. So we'll switch back and forth once or twice throughout. Um, as you can see here, Mazer Consulting is a uh, silver partner with Esri. And we're going to talk a little bit about Esri and the GIS software throughout this presentation. All right, so let's get started and talk about what is mobile and web based GIS. So just giving some preface because we're going to be using a lot of terms and talking about this throughout the presentation, but GIS continues to transition from more of a desktop platform and software to a mobile and web based solution. Uh, gone are the days where you relied on a GIS specialist in an office somewhere to print a map for you or send you a PDF. And now with the advances in mobile and uh, mobile technology and desktop computing as well, uh, we're able to really transition GIS into this more of a mobile and web based environment, uh, which is great because the GIS maps can now be published to the web in a format that allows people who aren't, aren't GIS professionals to view and interact with GIS maps and data. Um, this slide, there's a lot of talk about servers and clients, uh, but the main point that I'd like to take away, that I'd like you to take away is that the end user general public in context of this presentation does not need any special training or software to use these maps and apps that we're going to discuss today. Um, they're really user friendly. Esri's done a great job of developing some of the software uh, with this in mind so that basically if you can use a smartphone or uh, a web-based software such as Google Maps or something like that, you'll be able to use these uh, web GIS that we're talking about today. Uh, what software is needed? So the only software you need, um, if you go back one second, Megan, uh, the only software you need to is to publish the maps and applications that we're going to talk about. The end user, the general public, doesn't need any special software to view this, uh, these maps and applications. So they're able, basically, if they have an internet connection and a phone or a desktop, they'll be able to view everything that we're talking about today. So what are web maps and apps? These are two terms that are uh, used interchangeably a lot that can be kind of misleading, and we're going to use them throughout this presentation. So I just want to kind of throw it out there, the difference between the two up front. Um, a web map, as you can see here, is typically created by a GIS professional. Um, it's more of a GIS map. It looks like a GIS map, et cetera. It's just coming over the web. A web mapping application or app is that is built off of that web map, but also has an end user interface that includes configurable tools that allow that end user to interact with the app. So for example, um, map panning and zooming around the map are the most basic tools. But additional functionality expands from there and can include printing, drawing tools, filters, measuring, uh, buttons that will give you directions to a, to a certain asset. And we'll see some of this throughout today's presentation. Um, Mazer Consulting uses, we use Esri's ArcGIS platform internally and when supporting our clients as well. So just a little background on Esri and ArcGIS. Um, Esri is the global market leader in GIS software. Um, they've been around since 1969 and, and uh, believe it or not, creating GIS applications since uh, the 70s. Um, they have worked, Esri has worked with local governments throughout the country to learn what's important to them and where GIS can help with their workflows and needs. So a lot of the things that we're going to talk about today, and you'll see some links at the end, point to some of Esri's documentation and uh, other options uh, for different to support local government. Mazer Consulting has been a silver partner with Esri since 2017. And all that really means is that we're very familiar with the software and we work closely with Esri to help our mutual clients implement GIS. 
So now I'm going to turn it over to Megan, and Megan's going to start off by talking about some public web mapping. All right, so public web maps are tools that can be used by the local government to share information with the general public. And these maps can be used by citizens to help answer questions and they can interact with the map to get more information. So some of the questions they could answer are, what is my block and lot number? What zone do I live in? What day is my recycling or garbage pickup? And what is the street sweeping schedule? By sharing this information with the public, citizens can now answer those questions themselves using the web map and GIS as a tool and potentially reduce the number of calls coming into the town. Below is a screenshot from Maplewood, New Jersey's public web map that we helped prepare. And it is accessible from a mobile device or a desktop computer through your internet browser. Users can search for properties, click on locations on the map for more information. The map also includes some other points of interest such as public buildings, including their operating hours and contact information, the location of parking lots and public transit stops and parks and open space. So this is an example of some of the information that the general public can access through a web map. During the COVID-19 pandemic, we've seen the need to share even more information with the general public as things within our towns continue to change on a daily basis. Citizens can use web maps to look up information such as what restaurants are currently opening, are they offering any special takeout or delivery services, what retail stores are open and is there curbside pickup, and also, What's the closest COVID-19 testing site and other useful health services in my area? Sharing this type of information can help promote local businesses and inform citizens. And it's an example of a focused application that can be customized to meet your town's specific needs and what's going on in your area at a specific time. So there are many different types of focused applications that share important um, information for specific events or services within a local government. A few other examples are public events, voting locations and election districts, um, road maintenance enclosures, DPW activities such as recycling and snow plowing. The citizen problem reporter allows um, citizens to report issues around town and mosquito control for alerting residents of spraying operations, for example. The public notification web app is another example of a focused application. This one's kind of unique because it's used internally by the local government instead of the citizens. And it's used to share information with the public still. This map is used to identify residents within an affected area or radius of a specific property. You can select a property and set any search distance. Most towns refer to these lists as 200 foot owners list. The user can then produce a printed map or mailing labels addressed to the affected residents all from within this one web application from their desktop or mobile device. And this is another way that the towns can share information with the public and help streamline that process of generating lists and disseminating this information. All right, so another example of a focused web application that we wanted to talk about is actually a collection of two that are geared towards sharing information about events within a town or your area um, with the public. So the first is called the events calendar app. And what this is, is it's a, it's a bit kind of like a basic web map that has a point location for each event. So if we have a marathon coming up or a beer, you know, a beer tasting event or a concert, uh, there would be a point location on that, on that map uh, that the end user could click on to get more information. So on the right, this little screenshot you can see here is some of the summary information about a, uh, 
a uh, beer festival. It tells you the date and just some general info where it is and how much it, tickets are to get in. And then there's also a URL link to the website that contains more specific information. So the idea with this events calendar app is not to duplicate uh, information that's out there elsewhere, but really to aggregate information so that you can have one a one stop location where people could go to find out information that's happening uh, in your area. Um, you know, as I talked about earlier, the tools and the functionality uh, include some filtering that would let you filter by event type. So I can pick if I just want to know about concerts or charity events that are coming up, I can filter by those. I can also search for a specific location, which is really helpful in towns with tourism or rental properties. So if I'm going to visit uh, a certain town for a week and I want to know what's coming up during that week, uh, I can punch in my the address of where I'll be staying, see how close the different events are if I only want to be in walking distance. Um, and I can filter based on time range, location, and event type. So, you know, again, it's, it's really nice, you know, when you have this one source of information that you can go to to see what's coming up. You know, I have kids. If I want to see what's coming up in the summer and pick certain events, I could go to this location for my town and pull up events that would be helpful. And again, if I'm a tourist or going to visit somewhere, um, again, I can promote this app to see everything that's coming up in a certain time frame or event type. The second kind of component to this that um, supplements that is the events map gallery. So think of this gallery as more of a specific web map for an, uh, an event that may be more complex or you want to share specific information. So these may be things like parades or marathons or walks or even big festivals, right? So you would have a, a gallery view that would have all the events that you put in. You could click on one. So in this example, let's imagine that we're going to pick on this Memorial Day parade here. Uh, we click on that. And as we'll see on the next slide, you, you can get more information about that specific event. So this is just a screenshot of a, a demo web map. Um, but basically what we're seeing here on the bottom is a map specific for that event. So the dark green on the left is the parade staging ground, uh, area. The light green is the actual parade route. Um, the blue on the bottom is the restroom location and pink is, you know, maybe where the grandstands are, um, orange or barricades. So what's really powerful about these is I can use it to figure out where I want to go to see the uh, parade. But I can also bring this up on my mobile device when I'm at the parade. So if I'm on vacation or somewhere I'm not familiar with and I want to know where the restrooms are, I can see my location on my mobile device in relation to those restrooms. And you could even bring up directions, walking directions to get there. Um, so all of these details are associated within this web map. Again, it's all interactive. So the end user could click on it, see where it is, see it over aerial imagery, et cetera. Um, so that's the events map gallery, just another, another app that we were thinking, you know, we realized with COVID-19 and this becoming more of a long-term scenario, the, things like this, getting this information out to the public is even more powerful now so that they can feel comfortable coming out to these. They can see where they can go. And if there's certain capacity at areas where to park, uh, hand washing stations, security details, all of that type of stuff can be shared through these event specific web apps. Uh, a park locator is another example of this. So again, this is a web application that you could stand up for your, your town or your organization that would basically show a central source of all of the different parks that are available. So you could include in this your municipal parks, not only your municipal parks, but county and state parks as well that may be in your area. And then each park you can see in the screenshot in the right, you can filter based on activity there. So if I want to find all parks that have AD accessible play, ADA accessible playgrounds for my children, I can do that. And I can find them if I want to know if it's within a certain distance of my house. Maybe I only want to walk to a park and I don't want to drive. Um, I can filter down. Or like my sons are into right now fishing. You know, it's a new um, recreation activity for me. I haven't fished in probably 20 years. Uh, but now they're way into it. And I didn't know where to go to go fishing. So if I had this source and I knew my town was promoting this park locator app, I could log in, go there and find all the fishing parks within town. 
So again, similar to the other apps we talked about, you can filter by location, activity, type, et cetera, and get directions directly there. So it's just another source to aggregate um, information about parks and which you can then link to directly from your website and drive uh, traffic there so that people will start using it. Another very popular web GIS component is sto our story maps. So, you know, when we think about GIS and a lot of the clients and people we talk to, they're thinking about GIS for their internal operations, and they don't realize how powerful of a tool it can be to communicate information out to different people and parties. Uh, story maps is a different way that kind of transcends and elevates beyond just a GIS map. So a story map is a visually stunning way to present maps and information. It, these maps can be built off your GIS information and combine text and images, videos, sound clips, PDFs, all of that stuff into one uh, central story map. And we're going to take a look at uh, a specific project we worked on recently on the next slide, but these are great for education and outreach. Uh, they go beyond a map, so you can really share a lot more specific information about a topic. Um, what we do when working with our clients is we meet with them originally to get an idea of what they want to accomplish. What are their requirements and their wishes to have in this uh, story map? So on the right here is actually uh, the concept sketch that we had for uh, the Bethlehem Authority public access story map. So we met with uh, Steve, our client, talked to him about what he wanted to see on the story map. We took that and just kind of did a rough sketch of what it was going to look like and what information we're going to be was going to be contained in the story map and shared that with him so that he could review it before we spent a lot of time building this out to make sure that we were both on the same page. So on the next slide, we have a little looping video that'll show the story map and I'll try to keep up with it here. So here on the splash page, we have a UAS video that was captured um, that shows what the Bethlehem Authority looks like. Um, next is this kind of interactive map that you can scroll through that shows where Bethlehem Authority is in Pennsylvania, where their different properties are, and talks a little bit about each of those different properties. Uh, again, as you scroll down, now you can start to see, well, what can I do at Bethlehem Authority? They wanted to share with the public, like, what activities are allowed on their property. So hiking being the first one. So we've brought in some of these great photos that they had of their property into here and we actually dropped some pins on a map that showed where some kind of points of interest were that uh, Steve thought were great to highlight to people. Uh, Fishing is another popular activity out there. One of the cool things that we scrolled through pretty quickly there was a link to a, a trout fishing web map that the Pennsylvania Game Commission put together. Uh, again, hunting, bird watching, these really awesome photos and, and stories about what types of birds you can see on the property. You know, these things get you excited to go out and uh, visit their property. Uh, you know, they wanted to show some of their trail maps, but they didn't have GIS data for that. So we were able to integrate an old PDF of the trail maps there, but that might be a different phase of this. And then just links and information about security, et cetera. Uh, one of the cool, really cool things about uh, story maps is that I heard a statistic that the average person spends about 30 seconds on a website. Uh, the average time that a person spends on a story map is five minutes and 30 seconds. So it's just really kind of telling that people really like these story maps and will spend time learning and reading about the information that you've shared here. Um, again, this is just kind of a summary and a few screenshots, but you know, a great way to get the community involved. Uh, to share more information above and behind GIS maps and data. Uh, some examples that you could do is like an overview of a town. So what's the history of the town? Who are some famous celebrities that may have lived there? Uh, famous places that you want people to visit? Uh, MS4 stormwater permits have a public outreach component. So these are a great way to tell uh, people about what you're doing with stormwater in, in your area. Historic properties and districts, so you could almost have a tour of different uh, properties that you want to highlight people to. Planning and zoning, we're working on a story map uh, that communicates information about a master plan. And then specific story maps. Um, 
what really made me start thinking about this was about four years ago, I lived in Matawan, New Jersey, where the 1916 shark attacks that were kind of the, the foundation for Jaws happened. And in 2016, the town was having a hunt, kind of highlighting this as a, a hundred year anniversary. And I thought it would have been really cool to have a story map uh, about that. So, you know, these can be as specific or unique to your town or organization as you, as you want them to be. Okay, so, so far we've demonstrated various ways that you can use GIS to share information with the public. But it can also be a great tool for receiving feedback and input from your citizens directly. One example of that is with the Citizen Problem Reporter web map. So this is an application that you can access from your mobile device or your desktop, and it requests citizens to submit um, observations that they're seeing or other non-emergency issues, such as vandalism, littering, or potholes in their area. The reports are all time-stamped and they're location-based, so they're plotted on the map and they can be submitted with photos or additional notes from the, the user. And this can be customized to solicit a wide range of feedback that you're looking for from your residents, and it can be tailored to um, meet your needs. It's a great way to track issues and help the response time and address these problems that your citizens are, are reporting. Another um, program for re receiving citizen feedback is through an adopt a catch basin program. This is a great way um, to engage citizens with public outreach for MS4 requirements. Um, this example displays a map of catch basins throughout the town and allows citizens to select one to adopt or sponsor. They select it on the map and they're able to report any maintenance issues for that specific catch basin or if they see it's clogged and needs to be addressed. Town officials can track the progress, see reported issues and respond to those maintenance requests through an interactive dashboard as you can see on the right screenshot here. So here we have the map view. They're color coded based on the ones that have been adopted and reported issues for. And that just helps with the response time and the public outreach. So overall, the goal of having a public GIS application is to help improve the quality of life, engage your citizens, increase your tourism, and promote events, and address issues more efficiently. And it's all done through a mobile and web GIS platform that's available to your citizens 24-7. Yeah, and a lot of the examples we showed today were, you know, very focused and specific examples, but the technology is there to, to really adjust this and, and tweak it to based on your specific needs. So just because we're showing adopt a catch basin, you know, that can be so anything else, a street or a, a road sign, uh, anything like that, or the web map can be focused on retail businesses in your town. Uh, it's really uh, as scalable and configurable based on your specific needs. And here we've included some links to some of the public web maps that we talked about today, as well as the story map, and also links to some of Esri's template solutions for local government, where you can browse other examples. And that's what we're showing in the screenshot on the left here, some of the other applications that are more focused. And if you're interested in um, receiving a copy of the presentation with these links, or if you have any other questions, you can email us at this email address here. Yeah. And Meg, can you go back one slide real quick? Sure. Um, so one of the other really cool things that everyone likes about these web maps is you can also generate usage statistics. So you'll be able to see how often people are, are visiting these websites, uh, which is really cool because it really kind of shows you um, if people are using what you've built and released. 
Uh, it's really a nice statistic. And then, you know, on the left are the solutions for local government. It's just a screenshot from Esri's website. But if you want to see really the, the breadth of how you can use GIS, not only to communicate with the public, but how you can use it to manage, you know, different assets and, and all of that information, that's another great source. So now I think uh, if you have any questions um, that you haven't submitted yet, feel free to do so. And we'll see uh, if Maria has any questions that have been submitted for us. Hi, uh, thank you. We do have a few questions. The first question is from Kelly. What are the costs for the software to host the web apps? So that, that really depends on if you have any GIS software already, um, but you can get into publishing all of this using an ArcGIS online account. Uh, so that can be as low as $500 per year per user. So having that first account will allow you to publish a lot of these different applications. Uh, if you want to get into more GIS data management and using it for more than just the public web mapping side, then you might be looking at some desktop software. Uh, they could range anywhere from two to five or six thousand um, dollars. But all this software is available typically through state contracts, etc. Okay, thank you. Another question comes from Donna. Who maintains the data that is shared in the web map? Again, that that is can really be configured based on well, based on your needs and, and what you want to do. So we can we've worked with some clients that we talk with them, understand what they want, and we build it for them, and revise it for them, and maintain it as well. We have some clients that we do the initial kind of configuration and setup, and then we'll also train them on how to basically maintain data. So say you want to add a new event or something like that to your map, um, we can train you how to do that, um, or you can do it all yourself. So it's really a scale of anything on either end or between there. Uh, you can do as much or as little as you want to, and it really depends on time and technical expertise and all of that. Uh, and Esri also off offers a lot of off-the-shelf training as well as part of your software subscriptions. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, this question is from Pradna. What obstacles have you faced while making these interactive platform in form of applications? I think that data maintenance is one. So, you know, sometimes people will build something that's maybe overly complicated to start and don't realize what it's going to take to maintain the data. Um, so, you know, I typically recommend you don't have to start with everything or you don't have to build out your complete application right off the bat. You can start with some of your core functionality, um, build that out, see what's working, see what people like, and then iterate and revise it um, over time. So maybe we'll stand up kind of a, a basic application and let people use it for 30 or 60 days and then get some feedback on what they like or didn't like, and then in, in, incorporate some of that functionality into the next version. So I think really starting, not small, but Starting with your core requirements and expanding from there uh, is probably a recommendation based on some challenges we've seen. And then the overall data maintenance and app maintenance. Okay, thank you. Um, another question is from Phil. Although these are great for general public to get information, how can we use this GIS for our daily operations? Yes. Yeah, so that is a great question. Um, all of these web maps and apps are built off of data. So, you know, just that happened. It's a good screenshot we saved here on this Q&A slide, but it has, you know, parking locations. So, you know, these parking locations are G data you have in your GIS database and your public works can be using that to perform maintenance at those parking garages. Uh, the green polygons we see here are parks. So again, you know, you can be using that to store information about those parks, do maintenance about when, you know, what assets are there, what, what uh, events are happening there, uh, talking specifically about the events uh, app map gallery we talked about earlier. That's actually the front end for sharing with the general public, but there's steps leading up to that for event permit reviews and, um, 
DPW setup of the event. So where are they going to put garbage cans? Where are they going to put restrooms? All of that. Um, the street sweeping that Megan talked about, you know, that's all data that you're tracking and using internally first, and then certain data you're deciding to share with the public afterwards. So all of this stuff that we're talking about sharing with the public builds nicely off of data that you're using internally uh, for your daily operations as well across all different departments. DPW, planning and zoning, administration, all of that, um, all of that, all of the different departments and the work that they do can benefit from these types of GIS internally as well. Okay. Um, thank you, Mike and Megan. I believe that is it for the, the questions. And um, if I missed any, please. Um, Guys, I know there's a there's a Q and A section that I don't have open, so um, I hope that they ask them in the um, in that chat section here. But I'll uh, just hand it back over to you and, and Megan for any last comments or remarks. Uh, I just want to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, again, as Meg mentioned, if you wanted a uh, copy of the slide presentation as a PDF, that'll have those links that you can click on. Um, just reach out to this email here, surveywebinars at maserconsulting.com, and uh, we'll be sure to get that over to you. And if you have any other questions that you think of afterwards, just feel free to send that over, um, and we can, we'd be happy to help you out with that. Mm -hmm.